What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mic Check Podcast. It's your boy T Word, the People's Champ, here with my co host for the day, everybody's favorite niece, Landon Nice. And we're going to react to the Cricket Celebration Bowl. The game just ended, and boy, was it a game. We got right. some things to talk about. So um, I got to see the entire game. Land got to catch the most important part, the second half and into the finale. So we definitely going to talk about that. But I do want to give a little bit of stats and kind of give you a preview of what we think impacted the finale of the game. So the final score was 41 to 34 with North Carolina Central University beating the Jackson State Tigers in Atlanta. So it was a big game right next to where the house that Prime built used to stand, right next to where the Georgia Dome was at, about 10 feet away. So oh. it would have been really historic had his team been able to pull off the win. Unfortunately, they didn't. So we're going to look at the stats. They both had 23 first downs. Uh, Shadour Sanders had 329 yards passing. Uh, the QB for the QB for Central had 206 yards passing. I'm going to get his name here in a minute because he played a key role in this game. Now, where the real devil in the details comes in, Jackson State only rushed for 64 yards on the day, while North Carolina rushed for 254 yards between number five, the running back, and number 11, the QB. And they came at the most optimal times. I'm talking some big plays from both these guys. And you also had a big play from number 84 that counts as a rush on a fake punt. So that really leaned to what shifted the game in Central's favor, right? Now, right. here's something else to think about. Coming into the game, Jackson State was the number one FCS defense. They gave up 460 total yards, and they allowed Central to convert four of 11 third downs, and they went two of two on fourth down. That's big news against the number one defense because you can't give them – that's like an extra possession. You know, getting converted on, on fourth down is like a turnover. So with that being said, we're going to fast forward to the end of the game when things got heated. So the last three games – in the last three – drives of the game ended in scores with JSU scoring to go up, mm -hmm. North Carolina going up right after that, and then JSU coming back to tie the game and push it to overtime. And then finally, both teams got two overtime possessions. So I'm going to throw it your way and um, tell me how you're feeling about this game. Well, you know, you made a good point about the stats, uh, according to the defense on, I, I believe, Jackson State. Listen, mm -hmm. uh, that just means that the other team did their homework and they came prepared. You know, they knew that this right. was a big time game on the line. So, you know, um, you know, for me, I don't really am, I'm not interested in watching blowout. So I'm going to love a grimy, dirty, work hard battle between both teams. So I'm glad to see, you know, that the other team came prepared. You know, they they kind of knew what to expect um, going in. You know, mm -hmm. I heard you mentioning um, before on our conversation um, about uh, Jackson State never uh, being down at half. Mm -hmm. So, um, how do you how do you feel about that? I mean, does that mean they had never had faced adversity in their you know in their um, career this year? And sometimes that plays on your psyche. Like you don't if you don't go through it in a normal game to have to do that at a, you know, championship point or a pivotal point, you know, a game that's on the line for whatever reason, sometimes mm -hmm. that plays with the player's psyche and, you know, they get down, they get distraught. They're like, Oh my God, you know, I know these are college players, but you know, this is still a different time and era. You know, a lot of kids will complain, you know, this, that, and the other, we might not see that on the television, but you just right. never know like what's going on, you know, in the, in the midst of that sideline. So, you know, that's very interesting. Um, I will say that they somehow fought hard to get that last touchdown and throw it into overtime. Um, yeah. But what do you think about that? What do you think about the fact that they were trailing at the half? So, you know, it's important that it's important to note that North Carolina showed a lot of grit today. So mm -hmm. while you basically the stat the stat is like shows that they're front runners they've never trailed at the half all season and they carried that into the the championship the black championship game right but north carolina central university actually showed some grit and they were able to come back after being down and the way that they the way that jsu came back and they were like oh you guys score you up 17 you up 17 14 bet we're gonna come back hit you in the mouth go up 21 17 take it to the half on, uh, and they had a really big play. There was like an 85-yard TD before the half that really set the tone for what JSU expected to do. Going into the half, you had – JSU had, you know, like about six or seven minutes time of possession. All of their scoring drives 
total had taken up four minutes out of the first half. You know what I mean? Like they were scoring really fast. That could demoralize some teams that come in as the underdog. But North Carolina found a way to be tough, gritty, strong, and came in in the second half, stopped JSU on their first possession of the second half, and then they came in and put up some points of their own to really make it a competitive football game. Now, going into the fourth quarter, JSU, was their back was against the wall because by all accounts, North Carolina had the momentum. And they did everything they needed to do to control the game with the with the clock. They ran the ball, and it was just two clock. I was in the chat room watching the game with some other football folks, and one of the things that they pointed out, they kept putting a little mo- the milk emoji in the chat. Like, hey, they grinding that clock down. And you couldn't argue with that because it was true. They were taking off two, three minutes at a time, just running that rock. Number five, I'm going to get his name for us here um, off the box score, but because I want to give him his just due, uh, the running back for – the running back for North Carolina Central, Davis Richards is the quarterback, and he had 20 carries for 94 yards. And Latrell Collier, number five for North Carolina, um, he had 17 carries for 79 yards. Both had a TD, and they both went over four and a half yards per carry. That's huge because that means every other carry, you're one yard away from a first down. So that means that you're really matriculating the ball down the field. So you got to give them props to that. Now, I want to get into down the stretch. So – JSU goes in and they score and they go up by one. So now North Carolina Central scores and they're up by five and they have a decision. They score a touchdown, giving them a five point lead. They could go for one and just hope their defense does well or go for two and force JSU to have to score a touchdown with extra point. Right. Me, I'm going for two in that situation because it was plenty of plenty time on the clock to get the ball back and do something if you had to. Jackson State comes right now, scores a touchdown, and they went for one. So I want to ask. I know you're a little bit of a gambler on the sports side. Would you have tried to win it in regulation with a two-point conversion, or were you going for the one in overtime? What I, would you, do? you know, because I I would have took that momentum because you know they were hyped. You know they were yeah. hyped when they completed that pass in the end zone, and then boom, no yeah. more time on the clock. So now, in my opinion, it, you almost now have the momentum. You almost have the momentum. I think I would have went ahead and tried to go for the win instead of the tie. Um, yeah. You know, try to draw up some type of a play to get those extra two points in there. Yay, we win the game. Yeah. I'm like, that's just me. Um, yeah. Sometimes it, overtime is warranted, but I I felt like on overtime, when, when I when I felt when, when they – when it went in overtime, I felt like uh, Jackson State was not going to come out of this just because, just like you said, um, North Carolina was managing that clock the entire time. It seemed oh. that they offensively had the edge. So yeah. that's what I expected um, at the end of the overtime, and that's mm-hmm. exactly what ended up happening. So if I would have been Jackson State coach at that time, I probably would have tried to go ahead and go for the two while we had that short-lived, you know, yeah. ah, we just got to get it. Yeah, that adrenaline rush definitely might have forced my decision. You know, I've coached some football in my day and uh, mm-hmm. I, w- I went for it on fourth down a lot and I went for two a lot. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm from the Sean Payton School of Coaching and then we going for it. We're going for it, baby. <laughs> we're trying to win the game in regulation. We ain't trying to play in overtime. And the thing about it is the way that North Carolina stayed in the game. I really wouldn't have taken a chance on my defense. They ran the ball too well not for us to consider my defense is too tired to stop them. And what they do in overtime, the first drive, um, JSU wins the toss. They give the ball to North Carolina first. They go in, they score, and they run the ball in pretty much at play, and they just forced, they just ran the football down their throats. JSU yeah. came back and did what they do well. Shadur Sanders throws a TD pass, okay? Great. Mm-hmm. Now JSU goes on offense and – they just – they couldn't get it done. You know what I mean? They couldn't get it done. And what 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 can you do from there? You know what I mean? It's like – No. But I tell you what, what, I am glad. I am glad that they didn't deviate. I was a little worried. You know, there was talk. You know, we talked briefly about this earlier. There was talk about, yeah. you know, is Jackson going to throw the game, you know, all this. Mm. So I was glad that they did not do that. I was glad that they fought for that title. You know, right. they just at the end of the day came up a little short. I agree with that. They definitely um, – I feel like them kids played their hearts out. Nobody should hang their head low. You took it to you took it to OT, you know, double OT. And what can you do from there? You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's a great game for college football fans. It's a great way to end the season. 
Um, Coach Prime has a lot lying in front of him. Uh, mm -hmm. Those players who play laid out some great tape, mostly the offensive players, but they laid out some great tape. So hopefully the guys that go into the portal are going to get some great opportunities. And the guys that are sticking around at, at JSU are going to get some great opportunities to play better. So I'm going to give you a moment to give some closing thoughts. Do you have anything you want to leave with the people before we get up out of here? Nah, this was a good game. Like I said, I'm glad it wasn't a blowout. I'm glad Jackson came to play, you know, and didn't throw that tantrum like I like I kind of anticipated they were going to do. But they made it a well, good, fought out, you know. At the end of the day, again, they just came up short. That's all. You know, uh, from my understanding in football, when, you, when you're when you able to con control the run game and control the time, mm -hmm. a lot of times you'll come out uh, victorious. That's facts. So – I do agree with that. I second that, sis. So, y'all, thanks for watching. This has been the Mike Check Podcast with T-Word and my big sis, everybody's favorite niece, Landon Niece. Until the next time, we'll catch y'all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is the Mike Check Podcast. We'll see y'all. Peace. Bye. Peace. <laughs>